6.8 is linear combinations and spanning sets. So I'm sure you're looking at all these words on here and thinking, oh my God, what's she going to do? But I think it's really important that you understand the word part. I know the textbook is really hard to read, but I think if we read this, this isn't right out of the textbook, but there's some examples from the textbook. I want you to be able to understand this completely because it's important for you to understand what goes on further down the line here. So let's talk about two dimension first. If I gave you vector v here was 3, 4, you could write it as 3, 4 equals 3, 0 plus 0, 4, right? I add these together, I would get 3 plus 0, 0 plus 4 gives me 3, 4. Or you could write it as 3, 4 is 3 times 1, 0 plus 4 times 0, 1. Right, that all makes sense, right? So that means that we can say that 1, 0 and 0, 1 or more precisely, this set 1, 0, 0, 1, span R2. So just think about that for a second. If I said 0, 1, so if I had this little, little vector here, 0, 1, 0, 1, x is 0, y is 1, that's here, and 1, 0. So if I had these two vectors, if I multiply this vector times, I don't know, 4, one, two, three, four. So if I made it here and I did this one times two, I would get another vector out here, right? I would write, um, that would give me some vector that comes out here, right? So I could make any multiple of these going forward, backward, left, right, and I could span the entire two-dimensional plane here. I could find you any point on this plane by multiplying one, zero, and zero, one by some constant. That's all it's saying, okay? In R3, we say vector OP, ABC, is equal to A times 1, 0, 0. So this is on the x-axis, the basis vector of a length 1, on the y-axis, on the z-axis. So some multiple or scalar times each of these vectors can give me any combination of three numbers in my vector. So if I wanted to be 2, 3, 4, I'd make this 2, this 3, this 4. Easy. So that's the same as a times i. So vector i here, that's just the unit, the basis vectors they're talking about here, i, j, and k that we talked about in the last lesson. So they span r3 for the same reason as above. Okay, so I can make all kinds of different vectors by just multiplying by the different scalars here. It's important to note that in R2, any pair of non-zero, so you can't use the zero vector because if you multiply it by zero, you're going to get zero, our non-collinear vectors will span R2. So if I have collinear vectors, if I had a vector here like this, and I wanted to multiply it, um, and I just keep extending it this way, I'm not going to be able to span R2. If they're only two collinear, like if I said this vector and this vector, how can I make another vector when they're going in the same direction? I could make it longer, I could make it be negative, but it's always going to be on this line. So it's not spanning the plane, right? It's just a line. Okay, so that's why they say non-collinear vectors, and we'll talk about those a little bit in a minute as well. Okay, so um, in R3, any pair of non-zero, non-collinear vectors will span R3. So every vector in the plane can be expressed as a linear combination involving this pair of vectors. The most important word in this little statement here is every vector in the plane. So there are many, many planes in R3. When you talk about R3, you have to think about it as being a stack of papers. And so that there's, you know, there's a plane. I, I could keep lifting this up and up and up and up and up. And each one of these is a separate plane. Or I could go this way. Or I could go this way. Or I could be on the XY plane. I could be XY plane. I could be on the YZ plane. I could be on the XZ plane. So there's lots of different planes in three dimensions. What you need to think about is something like um, a movie where, you know, where the, the guys are trying to steal the 
Hope Diamond and they go into the museum and there's all those lines, those um, red uh, laser lines through and they have to go over and under them. So those are like all the whole bunch of different vectors in a plane in three R3. They're all on different planes. So I wanted to go to question number nine in your book because I think it's one that describes quite clearly what they're trying to get to here when they're talking about spanning. So if I had um, the set of vectors 1, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0, it says it spans a set in R3. Describe this set. So what is a set that I'm going to get if I do any linear combination of these two? Well, I'm going to get X and Y values, right? I'm not going to get any Z values because look, Z is 0. Z is 0 here. So this set is the XY plane the xy plane, the one you're most familiar with. The z's not even there. We didn't go up at all. We just went on the x and the y axis. Write the vector minus 2, 4, 0 as a linear combination of these vectors. So if I were to use these two vectors and I wanted to get this vector, all I'd have to do is minus 2 times this vector. And to that, I'm going to add 4 times this vector, right? That's going to give me minus 2, 0, 0, plus 0, 4, 0, which is this. That's all. Explain why 3, 5, 8 is not a linear combination of these vectors. In other words, if I put in values here for this 2 or this 4, no matter what I put in, I am never going to get an 8. I could get 3. I could make this value here 3 and I could make this value 5 but there's no way I can make an 8 from zeros. Nothing times 0 is going to give me 8. Okay so that's just saying um, you can't have you always have 0 for z. Always would be 0. And then it says, if vector 1, 1, 0 was added to this set, what would these three vectors span? Well, this isn't going to help at all. I'm still on the xy plane. xy still plane. I was going to still xy plane. I'm still on the xy plane because I have 0 for z. z is 0. I'm not going up or down in any direction. So that's... I wanted to go over this one because I think it covers a few of the points that might help make this a little more clear for you. Okay, so I wanted to show you again back on my little graph paper here. Maybe this might be the little piece of the puzzle that makes all sense to you. If I asked you to write 8, 7 as a linear combination of 1, 2, and 2, 1, you could say, well, if I put a 2 here, that would give me 2, and I would put a 3 here, that would give me 6, and they would add to 8, and this would be 4 plus 3 is 7. So my A would be 2, my B would be 3. That makes sense, right? So let's take a look at what it looks like on the plane here. So obviously this is all in, in R2. So if I have the vector 1, 2, so 1, 2. Here's my first vector, 1, 2. And I have another vector, 2, 1. So 1, 2, 1. So that's here. And I said, okay, if I wanted to get to the point 8, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, I should have probably drawn that on before we started. So if I want to get to this point way out here, let's get a ruler. I make this pretty. So if I want to go way out here, how am I going to get to it? And I said that if I multiplied this vector, this first vector here by 2. So 2 times 1, 2 is going to give me 2, 4. So here. Now I'm here. And in order to get to this one, I would have to go this far. So that's this one times 3, so that's 6, 3, right? 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 1 is 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. 
So if I extended this vector out to here, you can see that this vector, this doesn't have a very good ruler on it, this vector, which now is this long from here to here, if I put that on the end of here, it's going to take me right to this point here. So if I'm adding them head to tail, you can see that two times this one plus three times this little one got me to this point right here, which is eight, seven. And that's what they mean about spanning R2. I can make any combination. I could find any vector that has its endpoint anywhere on this grid by multiplying these vectors by different scalars. Okay, so let's do some of the math part. Now, I, I know it's hard sometimes wading through the words to understand what's happening here, but I think, I think this is going to help you. Okay, so R2 says so show that 1 minus 1, 2, 4 minus 6 is a linear combination of minus 12 and 20. So how do we do that? Well, we have to multiply this one. So it, we're going to write that a times minus 1, 2. Oh, don't break on me all the time. Plus b times 4 minus 6 has to be equal to minus 12 and 20. So now that we have these two, we're going to make two equations out of this with two unknowns. We have a and b as our unknowns. So I'm going to say that minus a, so this times this, plus 4b has to be equal to negative 12, right? This times this have to add up to this. And two a's, two a's minus six b's has to be equal to 20. Okay, two equations, two unknowns. This is back to grade 10. And I'm going to do elimination. So I'm going to multiply this equation by 2. So I'm going to do 1 times 2. That's going to give me equation 3. And if I do this equation times 2, I get minus 2a plus 8b is equal to negative 24. And these signs are different, so I add the equations together. Always a good idea, especially if it's a subtracting one, that you put a little sign out here so you make sure you know what you're doing. I add them up. Those disappear. That's called elimination. And minus 6 plus 8 is 2b. And 20 minus 24 is minus 4. So that means b is going to be equal to negative 2. Okay, so if b equals minus 2... I can use one of these equations. I'll use the first one. Minus 8 plus 4 times minus 2 equals negative 12. That's minus 8. I add it to this side. It becomes plus 8. So that's minus a is equal to minus 4. So a is equal to 4. And I make my concluding statement. So I would say 4 times minus 1, 2 plus... Oh, not plus, it's a minus b, minus 2. So minus 2 times 4 minus 6 is equal to minus 12 and 20. You can double check. Minus 4 minus 8 more is minus 12. And 8 plus 12 is 20. Okay, so two vectors are collinear. Collinear means they're on the same line. They're just down the street, right? Collinear if one is a scalar multiple of the other. So, for example, if I had 1, 2, 3, and I said vector b was minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, and you went to graph those, you'd find they're both on the same line. Just like if I had um, something like, um, say, this one here, which was 2, 1. Let's put it here, 2, 1. And if I did, well, I did three times it, I got 6, 3, right? This was 6, 3. These are collinear. They're on the same line, just a multiple. Could have also gone this way. So I could have done, um, I could have done minus 6 and minus 3 or something like that. Okay, so all I'm doing is saying that if there are multiples, if there's a scalar involved here that changes them to be the same thing, then 
that's it. They're, they're collinear. So a question like this might not be terribly obvious if something is collinear. So for this I have 6 and this is minus 10 and minus 21 and 35 and 9 and 15. They don't look all that collinear to me. But if you do some little ratios, so we could have done ratios here, right? Only it's so obvious. So, But if I said minus 2 over 1, is that equal to minus 4 over 2? Is that equal to minus 6 over 3? And you'd say, yeah, it's minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, collinear. So same thing here. I'm going to say, well, um, what 6 over minus 10? Is that equal to minus 21 over 35? And is that also equal to 9 over negative 15? Well, I've got all the negatives. There's definitely negative going on here. If I reduce this fraction, I would get 3 over 5. If I reduce this fraction dividing by 7, I get minus 3 over 5. And if I divide by 3, I get minus 3 over 5 as well. So therefore, they are collinear. Okay, so any two non-collinear vectors in R3 determine a plane. And remember, there's lots of planes. It's not just one plane in R3. There's an infinite number of planes. And all linear combinations of these vectors lie on this plane. There are many other vectors in 3 space that do not lie on this plane. You're more often than not to find two vectors that are not coplanar. So if three vectors lie on the same plane, they are coplanar. It's like they're all, they're all on the same plane, no matter which way I put the plane. They're all on the same plane. The test to see if three vectors are coplanar is to see if they could be written as a linear combination of the vectors. Okay, They have to be written as a linear combination. So now I'm going to do... Um, one that is a linear combination of the other one and one that isn't. Sometimes you will have to use elimination. You're going to set up two equations with two unknowns or three equations and three unknowns. And I'll show you how that all is going to work. Okay, show the vector u, v, w here lie on the same plane. Okay, so I want to show they lie on the same plane. So I'm going to write out some... Um, I'm going to write out some combinations here. So I choose two of them. doesn't matter which ones, but generally you want to put the one on the right side that's the bigger one or you're going to end up with a bunch of fractions, right? So you want to add the smaller numbers together to get a bigger number, not subtract things. Okay, so always look for the biggest one. doesn't matter which order you do it in. Okay, so I'm going to write out my first equation. So I have minus s minus 1s, I'll just write minus s, and plus t times 0. Well, t times 0, 0t, zero that's just 0, has to be equal to minus 3. So this is 0, minus s is minus 3, so s is equal to 3. Well, that was just very nice, wasn't it? They're not all that pretty. The second equation would be 3s, minus t equals 14. Okay, so again, I got that from here. 3s minus 1t equals 14. So if s is 3, I can plug that in right away. And I get 9. And I subtract it over here. That's going to give me 14 minus 9 is minus uh, positive 5. So minus t is equal to 5 and t is equal to negative 5. And finally, if these two are true, then what I get for s and t has to fit into the third equation. So I have three, I have three variables here, so I have three equations. So my third equation is going to be 4s plus t is equal to 7. Right, so I only had to use these two to get s and t, so now I need to check to see if 3 and minus 5 are going to give me 7 here. So I go 4 times 3 minus 5 equals 7. And really you should do it as left side, right side. I shouldn't have written it like that. 
so I would have said left side equals 4 times 3 minus 5, right side is equal to 7, and I get 7, and left side equals right side. So that means, therefore, 3 times minus 1, 3, 4, and my t was minus 5, times 0, minus 1, 1 is equal to minus 3, 14, and 7. And you could check that again if you want, but I think you've probably done enough of it to see that minus 3 and 0 is minus 3, 9 plus 5 is 14, and 12 minus 5 is 7. Okay, so sometimes you might have two equations with two unknowns here. This is kind of a bit of an anomaly because it was a zero here. You don't always get a nice zero there to play with. If there were two equations, two unknowns, you would do it the same way as you solve this one for the R2. You would still have to do this and then you would find your two values and do the same thing with the third equation. That is plug in those values to check left side, right side. Okay, so let's look at one that isn't going to work just so you're familiar with what could happen here. So it says prove that they do not lie on the same plane. So proving you're on the same plane it means it can't be written as a linear combination. Okay so we're going to try to make it a linear combination and we're going to show that it can't be. can't be written as a linear combination linear combo I'm going to write just to be fast. Okay, so here's my my um, vectors. So I have s times this one. So I'm going to write out the first one. So I get equation one. So remember, you're going to have three equations because you have three, three variables here. So I have minus s plus 4t is equal to negative 14. And my second equation is going to be 2s plus t is equal to negative 1. Okay, so I want to use elimination this time, which is what I said might happen sometimes. This is one that it is. So I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 2. So I have two s's here. So 1 times 2 gives me equation 3 here. So I get minus 2s and 2 times this is 8t, and 2 times negative 14 is minus 28. So now to eliminate the s's, that was the whole idea. Okay. So I got rid of the s's, I'm adding together, plus sign here, 1 and 8 is 9, and minus 1 plus minus 28 is minus 29, so t equals minus 29 over 9. It's not always a pretty number. Okay, so if that's t, what's s going to be? So I have to plug in s, plug in t into, I'll plug it into, um, I'm going to plug it into this equation because 2s, I don't have to do anything. Um, t is minus 29 over 9 equals negative 1. So 2s equals minus 1, so that's minus 9 over 9, plus 29 over 9, so 2s equals 20 over 9, and that means s is going to be 10 over 9. Okay, so now I have my two, my two constants or scalar multiples identified, so these two work to satisfy these two these two equations, right? I solved two of the equations. Now I have to check the third one to see if it fits. And if it can't be written, can't be on the same plane, that means these numbers aren't going to work into my third equation. So let's just say for z, because we're looking at these values now here, right? So this is going to be my third step. So I get 3s minus 2t is equal to 16. And my s is 10 over 9. So I have 10 over 9 minus 2 times minus 29 over 9. 
and this would be my left side. And my right side is going to be 16. So if I multiply this, I get 30 over 9 plus 50, uh, 2 times that's 58 over 9. That gives me 88 over 9. Well, 88 over 9 is not 16. So left side is not equal to the right side. Therefore, the vectors are not coplanar. Okay, they're not on the same plane at all. Okay, so that wraps up linear combinations and spanning sets. So um, give me a thumbs up if that helped you. And I want you to um, make sure you understand the concepts that are going on here because it's going to become important when we talk about intersections of planes and so on as we go farther into some vector work. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and have a great day.